Greetings, everyone. Hello. Welcome back. This is season two of Brave Conversations. My name is Autumn. For those of you who know me, and for those who you don't, hello. I am just a 22-year-old living life, and life is living, truthfully. There's another person on this podcast, my mom, but uh, she won't be joining us this time. But don't worry, she'll be here too, and then I'll let her introduce herself. But for my old people, as always, ohayo gozaimasu. And for my new people, good morning. You see the difference there? I'm going to tell you why there's a difference. My old people, they family. I'm comfortable with them. We know each other. We vibe. They stick, stuck through with me through season one of this podcast. So they get, they get to experience a special greeting. They get to experience my skills when it comes to Japanese. But for you new people, I welcome you. I'm glad to see you here. But I don't know you yet. But we can change that. All you have to do to my new people, hit that subscribe button. Become a part of the family. Become a brave conversationalist today by subscribing to this YouTube channel or subscribing to the podcast on whatever podcasting streaming platform you're on right now. And you can experience that special greeting as well. We can experience Japanese together. Who doesn't want to feel special? And that's that's how you join the family. Speaking of season one, it was good. But then it was a kind of chaotic, I have to admit. It was chaotic. The schedule was inconsistent. Uh, I promised some episodes I never made. Well, only one, to be honest. But it was just all over the place. I don't know what I was doing. I knew what I was doing because I feel like God put it on my heart to do those episodes. But at the same time, there was no there was no organization. I'm sorry. So, with that being said, I'm just going to promise to do better. That's all I can do at this point. God's grace is sufficient enough for me. And it's sufficient enough for you. And I just want to say, a part of that was because I was still in school, which I graduated, y'all. I know. I know. Okay, calm down. It is not that serious. Calm down. Oof. But yeah, I graduated. Um, but during season one I was still in school and you know to be honest I'm not really good at time management so my schedule got hectic and it got kind of stressful trying to put together these episodes for you guys but also make sure that I can pass that exam that I had the next morning it was just a whole lot a whole lot uh, another thing is that you know I kind of got discouraged a little bit of course we have our listeners and we have and you know I saw the numbers which which was a huge mistake I should not watch the analytics but I watched the analytics and uh, I didn't get the numbers that I expected. I didn't get the engagement that I expected, but that's okay. Like I knew going into this that I'll, I'll probably never get the engagement that I hoped for. And to be honest, I feel like God put this on my heart, not for me to be successful, not for me to have like an end goal in mind, really. But he just kind of wanted to see if I would do what he said. Am I faithful? Do I truly believe in his word? If he gave me a command right now, would I just say yes without any hesitation? And I feel like that's what he did when he told me to do these episodes. So with that being said, even though I got, I went through my period of discouragement and that kind of did put me off from, you know, being consistent and making sure that the episodes were up to par, I just, you know, kind of got back in with God because I strayed a little bit. And he made me realize that, hey, you're doing what I told you to do. So this is success. 
there's a quote that came up to me like a long time ago before I came to this realization and it was a failure in the eyes of man is a success in the eyes of God so fail at something and again that quote came to me way before my period of discouragement from season one of this podcast see y'all God is strategic I don't understand his timing but I don't have to (laughs) because it's perfect but I remembered that quote and you know I started to get filled with hope and excitement to do this podcast again and now here I am on season two of brave conversations this is episode one Last season, we ended off with just 12 episodes, which I also find ironic because, you know, 12 disciples, 12 sons of Israel, 12. 12 is a good number. So I decided to shoot for 12 for this season. The last season, I think I told you guys I was going to do eight or maybe in my head I was saying I'm going to do eight of these. I don't know if I ever voiced it, but I'm telling you now my goal is to do 12 of these. I'll probably do more if God put it on my heart to do more. But the goal is 12. If you exceed the goal, that's good. If you meet the goal, that's good. If you don't meet the goal, guess what? That's bad. I'm just playing. That's good, too, because at least you attempted. Remember, God just sometimes put things on our heart just to see if we we'll obey. So as long as you're obeying, you're doing your part. With that being said, let's get into the episode. Thank you for sticking with me, my old folk from season one. Welcome new people to season two. Go listen to season one if you're curious about what what, what, went, what went down there. And I hope you are fulfilled. Let's get into it. Mm-hmm. In the temporal realm, the testimonies within an individual are considered especially insignificant. On this podcast... The dedicated hosts who articulate these personal narratives are members of an elite community known as the Brave Conversationalists. These are their stories. Welcome back. Did y'all like that little transition there? Oh, yeah, I'm so proud of it. Y'all don't understand. Like, oh, my goodness. Um, So I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, this is actually like my second attempt recording this episode because I had a whole different plan for this episode yesterday it is currently june 2nd when i'm recording this i started recording this yesterday on june 1st and i had a whole different outline for it but i woke up this morning with a whole new plan god is crazy but i love it we stand for the craziness anyway um so let me tell you guys what i was going to do initially initially I was going to just give you guys a a life update. I feel like it was warranted because I kind of just ghosted y'all with the last episode of season one. And I felt like you guys needed an update on what's going on currently. I was going to tell you guys what the new format of the um, podcast would be. And just like give y'all all all the nitty gritties about my life. But then I went to sleep. Actually, you know what? Let me backtrack. I was recording the video and then my mom came home. And then for some reason, I was just like, you know what? That's it for today. So my plan was to record half of the video yesterday and then like record the rest today. But that's just not how it went. So I stopped recording when my mom came home yesterday. And I was like, you know, I'll just record the rest the next morning. So, you know, I stopped everything. And, you know, me and my mom, we ate dinner, blah, blah, blah. I went to bed, y'all. And I had a dream. I got everything I wanted. Vocals for days, but that's not where this is going. Um, So I had a dream, and I'm going to tell you guys about this dream. So I actually had several dreams. I don't know about y'all, but, like, sometimes I have, like, I'll, I'll have a dream, wake up, and then it, I go back to sleep, and it's a whole different dream. So that's kind of what happened last night. But anyway, this is the only dream that I vividly remember. And I don't even fully remember it. I just remember this one part, which, we, you know, that's a message from God. Anyway, so here I am in a living room. Let me give y'all a little picture of this living room, okay? So I'm facing the wall of the living room, a wall. Behind me is this huge 
bay window like it's a huge window no curtains nothing covering it it's just like a huge window the sun is shining it's almost giving like a gold light just behind me and it's behind me right I'm sitting on the couch um behind like facing away from the window but the couch is the window is behind the couch to my right um are people and I'm I'm thinking three in my mind I'm thinking it was three people but again y'all my my memory is a little fade like faded when it comes to this this dream I want to say it was three people standing to my right next to the door and so and these three people I feel like I knew them like they were faceless but like I feel like they were a part of my family some way like I, I was comfortable with them like it wasn't weird there was three people standing there they, they were meant to be there but anyway so like here I am sitting on this couch facing away from the window um gold light shining from the sun the window is bright three people to my right and then all of a sudden one of them says look here comes jesus and like y'all like i didn't okay initially if you heard that you would think that your that your response would be like oh my god here comes jesus like like is he a celebrity like it's jesus like of course you're gonna turn around try to get a good look and like oh snap here comes jesus not me (laughs) not me Y'all, I instantly got filled with nerves and fear. And it's not like fear, like, oh, my God, he's going to he's going to murder me. Like, ah. No, this was like nervous fear. It was almost like, oh, my God, he coming. Like, like, you know, that that fear, like, oh, my God, I'm not ready. Like, oh, my God, what is he going to see? What is he going to see about me? And that's the type of fear I've had. Like, and I didn't turn around or nothing. Like, I kind of just like stood there and was just like, OK, here comes Jesus. And like, and to be honest, I was kind of hoping that he passed by me without acknowledging me. I was just like, you know, just pass by me, you know, do what you got to do, blah, blah, blah. Remember, y'all, they pointed outside the window. He wasn't inside the house. They were saying, oh, my God, who comes Jesus? But they was pointing outside the window. They was pointing towards the window. So he was coming past the window, Um, this closed window. The window's not open or nothing, but he was going to come past the window. So they were just saying, look, here comes Jesus. But y'all, like, so all of a sudden, a shadow of a body just comes like you know how somebody passed the window um from the sun and you know they shadow casts over you as they pass because the sun is bright you know they passing you so that's what i saw but again i still didn't turn around i was just kind of just sitting there then next thing you know i felt two arms wrap themselves around me y'all remember the window closed now it wrapped himself around me and all i hear is i love you autumn y'all bruh and then I wake up. Y'all, what's significant about that moment? What point, what, what stood out to me is that when he said that to me, and like I knew it was Jesus because I said, look who is Jesus. And I, I knew when he hugged me, it was Jesus. But I still didn't turn around when he hugged me and he told me that he loved me. And I have to be honest with y'all. I didn't believe him. It was like when he said that, it was almost like, oh, you just saying that, you know, and that shocked me because like as a Christian, you know that Jesus loved you like he died on a cross for you. And me personally, like he has shown me so many blessings and favor and um, has gotten me out of difficult situations in my own personal life. And I've I've been fed by his word. I've been fed by his spirit. And like, so of course I know he loves me. Like, that's a given. Like, if you are a believer in Christ, then you know he loves you. But y'all, when he said those words to me, when he said, I love you, Autumn, I didn't believe him. It was like, in my head, I was like, oh, you just saying that. Or like, me? I was like, in disbelief, like, me? Like, come on, that. Come on, that. Come on, that. Go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> And that's what went through my head, y'all. And like, when I woke up, first I was a little bit confused I'm like oh my god what time is it I look it's five o'clock in the morning I instantly just got on my knees and I prayed and I told God like look I I don't know if this is a dream from you I don't know where this dream came from because it was unwarranted by the way I didn't ask God to show me his love or tell me you love me I ain't asked for all that I it just this dream just came out of nowhere so I was like God look I don't know 
if this is me, if my head conjured this up, or if this is you sending me a message. All I know is, is that when you told me that you loved me, I don't, I didn't believe you. I don't believe you. And y'all, I just busted out crying. Like, if you know me personally, on a personal level, I don't cry. Like, I don't shed tears you 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 be shocked you'll think that like I don't have any water in my system probably don't because your girls struggle with drinking water I'm not gonna say I never drink water because that's just blasphemy but like I struggle with being consistent with my water intake but anyway you would think I was a dry well because like I never cried but I busted out crying because like that dream y'all the impact it had on me I'm shocked with myself and I had to be honest, like I could have just wrote this off and be like, you know what? That was just a dream. Like, of course, I believe he he loves me. But I had to be honest with myself. And I was like, do I really believe that? Or am I just saying that because, you know, I'm reading his word and it says he loves me. So I'm just like, OK, so if his word says his word is the truth. So I guess, you know, that's the truth. He loves me. But like, do I really believe it? And so I asked God, I said, God, what you trying to say? <laughs> basically because like you know you can be presented with information but like how do I fix it I don't I don't we've already acknowledged that I don't believe that you love me you say you do so how do I go about believing that and so I asked God during my devotional time with you if he could show me a scripture or if he could send a sermon or something a sign some miraculous thing if he will or some unmiraculous thing like a person send somebody to tell me how how I can go about you know fixing this in myself within my heart how do I believe how do I accept your love for me that's what I asked for in the prayer and then I went back to sleep because your girl tired look you woke me up at five o'clock in the morning I just realized that you woke me up at five to cry I went back to sleep Anyway, so I woke back up, did my devotional time, and like, you know, I pray consist like I pray so much during my devotional time. Like I think I pray every time I read this word. I'm just like, thank you for this word. Tell me what it means. Cause like that's my main thing. I just like I want to understand what it is you're trying to tell me. Like I don't want to be guessing and because like, I could probably guess wrong if I lean on my un- own understanding. So I need you to tell me exactly word for word, like what are you trying to say? So I prayed that again. And then in the midst of my devotional, he brought forth um, scripture, uh, Matthew, no, Mark, my bad. We, we, we in Mark now. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. So I'm going to read that to y'all. This is the NLT version. Because why? Y'all should know. My old folk, they know. Your girl is in NLT over here. NIV has been stinking up on me. But your girl is in NLT. We at the part in Mark where um, Jesus cursed the fig tree. Jesus was like, I think he was hungry at the time. Let me go back. Let me get this right. Let me get this right. So it says um, he was hungry. So Jesus was leaving Bethany, right? He was hungry, right? So then he noticed a fig tree in the distance and it was like, it was a full leaf fig tree in the distance. So he goes up to the fig tree, but then he sees that it's no figs on it. Um, because it was too early in the, in the season for the fig tree at the time, I guess for the season of fruit. So God, so Jesus was like, okay, may no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him say this to the fig tree. So Jesus out here just cursing trees because they not ready. If I'm going to dive more into that myself because I'm just like, that's kind of random. Um, what you trying to say? <laughs> Again, y'all, like, I ne- I'm trying to understand. Like, I'm trying to go deeper. I'm not, just, I mean, I'm going to take your word because it's the truth. But I need to understand, like, why did you just walk up? You you know yourself is not the season for fruit. So why is you cursing him? Or not him. I'm Lord, I didn't gave the tree. Lord... <laughs> why are you cursing the tree it's not his fault it's not the season for fruit or is it see that's why i gotta do i'm gonna do more deep reading but that's not the that's not the point 
But um, a lot of stuff happened since then, since he cursed the fig tree. Remember, the disciples heard this. So then later on in the chapter of Mark, Mark 11, um, we get to chapter, I mean, verse 21. And or we get to verse 20. And the next, it says the next morning as they passed the fig tree, he had cursed. Jesus had cursed. They had noticed that the roots were withered, like the, the plant was dead. So then Peter remembered what Jesus said to the tree. And he's like, hey, yo, hey, yo, 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 Jesus, the fig tree is dead. The one you cursed is dead. Like he was shocked. He was like, oh, my God, it's dead. Like me. Like, well, I was shocked when Jesus was like, he, he loved me. I was shocked. I was like, you love me? Oh, my God. I remember you said that, but I'm shocked. I'm like, oh, my God, you said that? And now I'm seeing it. But anyway, so Peter was like, Jesus, yo, that, that tree you cursed, it's dead. Bro, it's dead. So Jesus was like, he was not to lie. He was like, I, I'm assuming he's kind of like this. Like, Peter, like, why is you shocked? Like, what I said, I said what I said. I said what I said oh my goodness but jesus was just like and this is what he said and this is the verse that came in me to me during my devotional after i asked god to reveal to me what he was trying to say to me in that dream it says then jesus said to the disciples have faith in god i tell you the truth you can say to this mountain may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Y'all, that, and that's what came to me during my devotional. When I read that, y'all, it was like a light bulb went off. And I knew instantly what he was trying to tell me. And so the title of this episode is my disbelief and doubt for season two um i've decided to be vulnerable and let y'all let you guys in on what god has been doing to me during during this transition in my life i told you guys i just graduated so now i am transitioning into the workforce I'm taking a gap year before I apply to med school. Within that gap year, I'm going to be trying to study for the MCAT, take the MCAT, gain clinical experience, gain shadowing experience, because I didn't do any of those things during my four years of college. Got a good GPA. So that's off the, the checklist. But everything else, I've let fall to the wayside due to COVID and all that. I'm not going to get into that. But that's my plan right now. And so during this gap year, I'm trying to find a job. But, um, I don't know what to do. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where God wants to send me. I don't know. Um, I mean, I know what jobs I want to apply for, but I also don't want to just end up doing a job that I'm, that I'm going to end up hating. And I'm just like, you know, the, the year that I'm doing it is just going to be horrible. I don't want that. I actually want to do something that I enjoy and that I'll, I'll do with all my heart. And so I asked God, I said, God, where do you want to send me? What's my next assignment? What's my purpose? You know, those those questions you ask when you're in a period of transition. And so he's been silent, or at least for me, he's been silent. Um, I'm still not really clear on what exactly what area he wants me to go in. And I'm still not very clear on what my purpose is and what my talents are it's just very confusing so i've been praying every day for him to reveal that to me and it, it seems like he's silent and he's probably you know for me it's like he's probably already told me and i'm just ignoring it but right now it seems like he's silent and so the answers i have been getting though um he's been silent on answering like what my purpose is but the answers i have been getting he's been revealing things within my heart that i didn't that i didn't even well, one, things that I didn't know were in my heart, but also things that I do knew was in my heart, but I wasn't taking the steps to to release them. And so this season, every episode is going to be one trait or emotion that God has revealed that's in my heart that I'm going to reveal to you guys. Not, It's almost like a confessional, actually. I'm going to tell you guys how it was revealed to me, 
what prompted this revealing and then I'm going to tell you guys where I'm at with you know dealing with it and so this episode is going to be touching on my disbelief and doubt um in God basically uh, my lack of faith I guess you can say and we all deal with it you know as Christians as non-believers and so initially I didn't think that I had that in my heart to be honest I didn't think I mean I know that at times I have no faith but it's still a mustard seed of faith in there and so for this to be revealed to me was a shock to me like Peter was shocked that that fig tree died after Jesus cursed it I was shocked when Jesus told me he loved me and so with that being said I I then after I revealed well God revealed my disbelief and doubt in my heart and he brought me that verse I realized that wow I'm praying out here with doubt in my heart and Jesus just said don't you know you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart and I have to ask myself like if I really did tell a mountain like he said what he said um if I tell a mountain you may be lifted up and thrown into the sea would I really believe it no but you're supposed to, right? Because, you know, you read the word and you says, and you know, God says that you have that ability, you have that power, you have the Holy Spirit within you. So, um, and then, you know, uh, Philippians 4, 13 says, for I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. So with that being said, and I should believe that if I told a mountain to, you know, be lifted up and thrown to sea, it'll be lifted up and thrown to sea, but I don't. And so I started to apply that to other prayers that I've made in the past. Like I ask for things, but do I really believe that I will receive it if I ask? No. And it's kind of dumb to me because like if I don't even believe that I will receive it, then why am I even asking? Y'all, my mind was just blown and like. So then I started to apply that to what he said in the dream. How I was just like, why do I not believe that he loves me? Let's get to the root of the problem. Why do I have this belief that he doesn't love me? And so I started to really think about myself and I realized that I don't love myself. And I remember this one verse that was, it's in the Bible where somebody asks Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replies that the greatest commandment is to love God with your heart and soul and mind with all your heart, you know, that, but the second greatest is to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. And like, I started to think, I'm like, if I don't love myself, then I can't love my neighbor because it says love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if I have no love for myself, I'm not going to have any love for my neighbor. And so I put Jesus into the mix. If I don't have any love for myself, then how can I love Jesus? If I can't even accept love from myself, like the person that I talk to every day in my head, of course, I'm not talking out loud, (laughs) but the person I talk to every day, if I can't even accept love from myself, how do I accept love from anybody else? And so how do I even accept the love from Jesus? Right. And so I was like, wow, because y'all have to be honest, like I talk really bad about myself, like and it's become a habit now to where I don't even notice that I'm talking bad about myself because I, I'm always doing it. So now it's a habit. And by, by talking bad about myself, I'm like, oh, my God, you're, um, you're not you have no talent. Um, you're lazy. You're overweight. I say other words, but I'm not going to say it out here because they sound pretty harsh when I say it out loud. You're overweight. You're unattractive. Um, you talk too much. You talk too little. It's just like so many comments, bad comments that I say to myself every day that I realize that like I truly just don't have any love for myself. And that actually shows in the physical, too. Like sometimes I don't even I don't even take the time to do self-care. Like, of course, I do the 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 routine stuff. Like I take a shower. I make sure my hair is done. I make sure um, I'm fed. I make sure, you know, 
I'm clean. I'm smelling good. Blah blah blah. I make. I mean, I buy myself nice clothes. I got nice shoes. You know, I indulge in those in those routine things. But like when it comes to like you know, um, you know, just when I think about self care, I think about you know like facial routines. Uh, you know, keeping my nails done. Like I don't really, I don't really care about keeping my nails done. Um, doing my toes, you know, things to make you relax. Like, you know, just getting a massage, maybe. I don't know. Those things I don't really take the time to do because I don't feel like I'm, it's worth it, I guess, that I'm worthy of those things. Uh, I, yeah, that's, that's, that's the right verbiage. Um, that I'm worthy of those things. And so, yeah, that's where I am. And like, I want to give you guys, you guys a solution. I want to say that, hey, this is what God told me to do. Uh, to fix this but I'm still waiting on God to tell me how to fix it a part of me feels like I need to like like the Bible says I need to capture those thoughts and think about and replace it with word with scripture which I have been doing um at times when I'm feeling hopeless I replace I replace like oh my life is meaningless my life is, is going to be amount to anything not amount to anything I instantly think about John 10, 10, which John 10, 10 um, in the NLT version says the thief's purpose is to kill, steal and destroy. My purpose is to give them a full, I mean, a rich and satisfying life. And so that I feel like in those moments when I do replace my negative thoughts with scripture, it actually really helps, especially when I repeat it to myself, because like I'm like and then I start to think like my, my negative thought didn't even make sense. Like, why would Jesus die on the cross for me for my for my life just to be meaningless? Like, where's the point in that? And so I start to realize that, like, some of these negative thoughts don't even make sense. So why am I thinking about them? And then it also helps me bring clarity about myself. Like, where are these thoughts coming from? Like, is there something in my childhood that happened um, where these thoughts are conjuring? Is there something that's happening now that I've not had? that I haven't paid attention to that is actually really affecting me. And so that is my plan of as, as of right now, um, of how to combat this, I guess. Um, I just really have to love myself. You guys, I just really have to start. It's hard because like the negative comments that I say about myself have become a habit now. And so, you know, habits are hard to break, but they can be break. They can be broken. I said they can be breakable. I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word, but they can be broken. And so I have faith in God. And I know it's, it's hard to believe after what I just said that I just realized that I didn't have faith. But I have even more faith now that I will get to a place where I just speak love and positivity into my life instead of this constant negativity that I'm speaking into my life. You know, we have power in our tongues. We can speak life or death into our tongue. That's Proverbs uh, 18, I believe. And um, yeah, and so I realized that I need to, in a way, I feel like God is renewing my mind in order for me to understand my purpose. Because the, the way that whatever he's leading me into, I can't go in with this negative mindset about myself. I can't go in thinking that God really doesn't love me because then I couldn't spread the love that he has for me to other people. And that's the second greatest commandment. I mean, and then I couldn't even fulfill the first one, loving God with all my heart if I can't even accept his love for me. Um, so how can I love him if I can't even accept the love he has for me? I'm supposed to uh mirror Jesus in a in a way or try to strive to mirror what he did when he was on earth. So if I can't even accept his love and I can't even love myself and I can't even mirror the love that he gave to others, then I'm just I'm I'm what am I doing? I'm already at a bad start. And so yeah, that is my plan and that is currently where I am. I'm trying to speak love and positivity to myself, trying to break the habit of you know, always talking down to myself, um, thanking God that he revealed this in my heart. And like, I'm just filled up with so much hope and faith that I will get to a place where I love myself. And then I'm, I feel like I'm only just one more step closer to identifying what 
assignment, what season I'm in, what is his purpose for me. Um, and yeah, so pray for me, you guys pray that, you know, this, that my mind is renewed through Christ. Pray that, you know, I speak nothing but positivity and love into myself so that I can do justice to others. And I actually pray that for someone out here, out there who also is going through the same emotions as me, that you come to know that Jesus really loves you and that you also can step into your purpose with a renewed mind, as the scriptures say. Um, I want to give words of encouragement. And so I want to read this verse that I feel like just speaks out to what I just said. And this is in Acts of the Apostles. So in the NLT version, they, they call this chapter Acts of the Apostles. But in other versions, it's just called Acts. Um, I mean, they I, I, I believe they probably mean the same thing. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to pull it up for you guys and this is these are words from you know peter we know peter we know peter we familiar with peter peter malark no i'm sorry i kind of go overboard sometimes but you know what i'm just gonna let i'm just gonna be me be free because the things that that plays out in my head sometimes um for me it's it's comedy gold so, yeah, I'm getting to it. I got my Kindle, by the way. Ooh, period. We rich. Um, we got a Kindle. All right. So then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. And the reason why I wanted to read that is because I know there's probably people out there and sometimes I believe in myself is that, that, that the love of God is reserved for certain people. And that is not true. You know, you just heard it from Peter, uh, one of the uh, disciples of Jesus, that God shows no favoritism and he accepts those who fear him and do what is right in every nation. And that includes you. That includes me. And I know it's going to take me a while to believe that. Um, and so I have to just keep reminding myself until it sticks. But at the end of the day, you guys, Jesus loves me and he loves you. With that being said. That's the day. All right. Nah. All right. That's the ending of this episode i am so pumped to be back for season two y'all for season one i mean at the end of season one i said i was going to do uh he was going to do a part so i guess it'd be three and four talking about harriet summit and where is god in her story i still plan to do that because that is such i mean the material that i learned about harriet tubman and where god is in her story I feel like it needs to be revealed to people because it's just shocking the things I learned about her life um, and how God played a role in her life. And so I will be doing that episode. I'm not going to give you guys dates because I don't know when that's going to come out. Like I said, God is the producer. He is the creator. He is my manager. So whatever he says goes and he put it on my heart to do this episode, this topic for this episode. So stay tuned for the Harriet Tubman episode that will be coming out. Um, Again, I want to know what you guys think. And as you see, we have a new component to this podcast. I am now going to be doing videos for it. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, hit that notification bell. So you know when the video is up and ready for you guys to view. I'm really excited about this video version because like I have a bunch of ideas in my head. I hope you like it. Engage with me, you guys. I really want to know what you guys think. Um, where are you in your faith and your belief in God? Do you believe in the things that you're praying for? Do you believe in the things that you are reading in scripture? Or are you just, you know, taking it for face value? Let me know in the comment section of this video or if you're just listening, 
you can actually leave a voice message hit that link in the description show notes and uh, anchor will take you to the platform to the anchor platform where you can leave a voice message and i can use your voice message in the next episode um if you want to be anonymous just shoot me um a dm or a message within anchor within your voice message say hey i want this to be anonymous i don't want my name out there i don't want my voice to be recognized and i will do all of that i will not say your name i will disguise your voice and all that but if you do want your name and your and you cool with your voice being out there i shoot i'll do that too thank you for being brave thank you for engaging hit that like button share this content and uh subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcast streaming platform you are on we are on apple Podcasts, spotify stitcher radio public so many different platforms that you can subscribe to this uh this podcast about you can also follow us on our social medias we have a facebook page and an instagram at brave combos that is b at sign b r a v e c o n v o s at brave combos like follow share our content on there this has been great for you guys. Um, itsumo osewani nate onemas. And see you guys next time. Peace.